Oh, hi there. Welcome to the shop. Listen, I've been working at Farmer Brothers Repair for a long time. You know, we used to work on motorized vehicles, automobiles, but you know, not as much money. We shifted over to the human body because that's a heck of a vehicle and we can make a lot of money repairing that human body. It's really interesting because I can make a relationship for you between the human body and the motor vehicles we used to repair. And it simply looks like this. You go to the junkyard and there's cars stacked up all over the place. A question you may want to ask is, why are there so many cars here in the junkyard? Well, it's interesting. Because if you look back at the manufacturing of cars, one of the things you notice is this. You start with a set of blueprints. And then from those blueprints, we make all the parts to make a car. Oh, this is really good. So we make the parts, and then we assemble those parts in the factory, and lo and behold, we create the wonderful vehicle. What's really interesting about this is, I say, well, when we created the vehicle, were they defective? I go, no, you know, they have a lot of quality control. So here's an interesting fact. When a car comes off the assembly line, it's been through so many spot reviews and people looking at it and checking it out. So by the time it leaves the assembly line, they're pretty good shape. As a matter of fact, here's an interesting fact. About less than 2% of the cars coming off the assembly line actually have any inherent problem with them, that there's some kind of defect. So I would say, okay, look, you bought a car, well, every two out of 100, you might end up with some kind of lemon and it's gonna have to be repaired. So let's acknowledge that, hey, 2% of the cars in the junkyard got there because of mechanical failure. But then it says, yeah, but what about the other 98% of the cars in the junkyard? I go, ah, we keep blaming the vehicle, but it turns out it's actually driver error. Driver's not servicing the machine. Driver is pushing on the machine and not paying attention or servicing it regularly. All these issues about not maintaining your vehicle ends up with the vehicle being in the junkyard. And then we blame the vehicle as the problem. Well, when we switched over to the human vehicles, we found a very similar kind of story. And the similar story is this, is that yeah, we are vehicles and we have blueprints which are called genes. And then these genes come together and create the parts of the body, the proteins. And then the proteins get assembled into the vehicle. And here's an interesting fact. How many of those vehicles, those human bodies that get born, come off that assembly line having defects? Well, you might think with the healthcare crisis that we have, there's lots of defects in human biology. But here's a simple truth. When we look at the genetics and development of a human, guess what we find? We find that less than 1% of human bodies arrived here with defects in them. 1% or less of disease is actually connected to the genetic blueprints. Well, that makes an issue. If only so few people actually can claim that their health issues are due to genetic defects, then what the heck is the healthcare crisis all about. It's interesting when we look at the vehicle, the human body, it's made out of protein parts, over 100,000 different parts. And that genes make these parts. And apparently, hey, less than 1% of disease has anything to do with parts being defective. Well, then that has to lead us to a question, and then where the heck is all the disease coming from? Well, we get down to the fundamental nature of biology, and let me give you a simple fact. You are made out of proteins. The proteins represent your physical body. But signals from the environment control the development of these proteins and the action of these proteins. And so we have to include the signal, which is really coming from the driver. The driver is sending information to the vehicle on how to drive the vehicle. Well, here's the most important part, that we find that only 1% of the vehicles, the human vehicles, are actually in a healthcare crisis because of defective workmanship. But that means 99 or so percent of the vehicles end up in the healthcare crisis junkyard, not because they were defective, but because something else was wrong. Well, since the only two things that count are the proteins which make the vehicle and the signals that control the proteins, and we've already eliminated the proteins as the serious problem because less than 1% of illness is due to bad proteins, we are left with a problem with the driver. The driver creating the signals that control our genetics and in a sense also control the biology of the proteins which create our behavior. 
So it basically says you may have really good protein parts and a good solid vehicle, but how you drive that vehicle could cause all the damages that we talk about. And I say, well, what would be the issue that can cause the healthcare crisis that we're facing on this planet today? And the answer is stress. Science has now revealed that up to 90% of visits to your vehicle repair shop, also called the doctor's office, up to 90% of doctor visits are actually as a consequence of stress. I said, well, what's stress? Well, first of all, let's identify there are two kinds of stress. One is actually a good stress. That's called you stress. You say, good stress? I go, yeah, well, look. You go out and you play some sports and you're out there exercising your body. Guess what? You're pushing on your body to play the game. But it's not a bad stress because that kind of stress actually strengthens your body. So the more physical activities you engage in, the more stress, but it's not a debilitating stress. It's actually a stress that enhances the development and growth of your body. That's called you stress. That's not why your vehicle ends up in a healthcare crisis laboratory. The reason why you end up there is because of what is called distress. Distress is the negative stress. I said, well, define it. Well, let me give you the broadest definition of distress, and that is this. Anything that gets in the way of your final destination, anything that blocks you from going to where you want to be in your life, or any goal that you have set, anything that interferes with obtaining that goal is really classified as distress. I say, oh, so anything that interferes with my vitality and my ability to create the life that I want, by definition, underscores the word stress. I say, well, what kind of stresses can affect the human body? Well, the first thing is very easy. Just like with a car, you could have physical trauma. Well, instead of, you know, banging your car into a tree, just banging your body around could cause a damage to the system. Falling off a curb or injuring your back in some way is a serious issue for this reason. If you wrench your back, you're interfering with the signals. Where? From the brain to the body. And it has to go through the spinal cord. So anything that traumatizes the nervous system, by definition, interferes with signaling. If you interfere with the signaling, then you are not in absolute control of your biology. So if you experience trauma, then we are really driven to go find a person, a healer, to adjust our physical body so that we can start running in full strength again without any interference of the signals affecting the cells of our body. So basically, trauma is a cause of stress and yet we can deal with it by taking your body to the shop and working on it, putting in the right nutrition and doing the right adjustments. Uh, this will bring you back to health. Well, in addition to trauma, another source of stress are toxins in the system. Hey, look at it this way. You put bad gas in your car and that thing is not gonna work worth a damn. So basically, you wanna make sure all the things you put into your vehicle are of the highest quality. And when we come down to that, then it says, look, we are a civilization based on junk food. We have been nurtured by industrial farm products. These chemically derived so-called foods are actually lacking in a lot of nutrition, and many of them are actually toxic to the system. So the whole idea is this. You wanna take care of your body, be stress-free? Well, then make sure that the things you put into the vehicle to make it run, the food you eat, the fluids you drink, are pure and clean. Best thing is go organic, go natural, and keep away from factory farm produce and foods from farms, because these things aren't grown with your health in mind. They're grown with profit in mind. How can I make a bigger cow for less money? Well, by toxifying the cow. And that's where all the drugs that come into agriculture start to distort the food. So, we now have two sources of stress to deal with, trauma, Yes, if you have trauma, you are physically impairing the vehicle and its operation, and this can lead to a healthcare crisis. Two, toxins. Yes, if you put food into your body that is not nourishing, but in fact containing things that are upsetting of the system or destructive chemistry that doesn't support your health, then for sure, Toxins in your system are going to create a stress. They're going to interfere with the signaling, 
between the brain and the body, and these toxins will distort the behavior, and distorted behavior means it's time to go visit your vehicle repair. So, we have two issues now that are causing the biggest problems in healthcare crisis, trauma and toxins. And yet, we didn't even talk about the biggest one, because the biggest one is more insidious. The biggest one is thought. Yes, thought can be stressful. In a sense, thought that does not support your harmony, your growth, your ability to communicate and participate in a community of others as well. When your thoughts interfere with your biology and its normal progress, these thoughts can be destructive because they send signals to your body that create behavior that is out of context with where you are. Your thoughts can increase bad behavior just by having a bad thought. A fear is a thought, but a fear is also a stress. So many fears that we see on television or hear on radio or watch on our computer, fears about a world that is not safe, not supporting you, a world that you must be afraid of. Those thoughts of fear put you in a protection and they result in the release of stress hormones into your body. And the stress hormones shut down the growth and maintenance of the body and interfere with the immune system. So this is where the biggest problem of health comes from. Not the trauma, not the toxins, but the negative thoughts. The thoughts that you should be afraid, that you have no power, and that your life is in threat. Threat from losing a job, threat from an economic crash in the world around us, threat from your own house not being available to you. All these issues of, oh, how am I gonna take care of my life? Those are where the stresses come from. And what do we now know? Up to 90% of doctor visits in the United States are directly attributed to stress. So when you stand back and you start to look at the healthcare crisis in the United States, why are there so many defective human vehicles on this planet? And we have to go back and say, not because of manufacturing, actually less than 1% of stress issues and defects in the body are due to the genetics and the proteins. That means over 90% of illness on this planet has to do with the induction of stress. Well, this is profoundly important for a very simple reason. That because we can control our stresses. We can change our thoughts. We can change our response to the environment. We can maintain ourselves in a healthier situation. And why is this relevant? Because if we start taking responsibility for our health, instead of saying, oh, it's just genetics that made me do it. If we can take responsibility for health, then we have power. And when we take that power and use it, we can heal ourselves. We can walk through fire just because of consciousness. And on this planet, we can walk through anything by just changing our consciousness. Why? Your thoughts are the most powerful controlling feature of your biology. Your thoughts are translated into chemistry that goes throughout your body and regulates your genetics and your behavior. So it comes down to a simple conclusion. A positive thought releases positive chemistry that supports your health, but a negative thought releases chemistry that will undermine your biology, create the issues that we recognize as stress-related, and then lead to a defect in our human vehicle. A simple conclusion is this. We are not frail and vulnerable as we have been led to believe. We are very powerful vehicles on this planet. But we have to recognize how we live our life, lifestyle, how we express our thoughts and our beliefs, what's going on in our mind, these are the primary control of health. Relevance, hey, you don't have to buy anything. It's free. You could work on your mind and you can change your beliefs and attitudes and get out of the stressful world and start to live in a world of healthy, happy, harmony, support. And guess what? Health issues will immediately reverse themselves. You may attribute it to the placebo effect. And I go, what's the placebo effect? I said, oh, it's a healing just because of a belief. Oh, this sugar pill. No, it's not the sugar pill that healed me. It was the belief in the pill that healed me. So let's look at it this way. The healthcare crisis economically is sinking this country and every other country on the planet because of the expenses of maintaining healthcare. And what are we finding out? Disease issues 
aren't physical. Disease issues are primarily due to consciousness. How much does it cost to change your consciousness? Nothing. <gasps> you mean we could heal the healthcare crisis without spending all that money? Yeah. And what does that mean? There's a heck of a lot more money left over to enjoy yourself on this planet. So start thinking well, start eating well, start living well, because those are the functional practices that can return health to your body. Don't depend on the pharmaceutical people. It's not coming from them. It's coming from you. You are all powerful. You have the option to change the way you think. And when you change the way you think, you change the way you live. So let's all come together and recognize this is a place to enjoy. To enjoy it means let go of those stresses. That's just mind stuff. It's not even real. But your biology, your cells, hey, they don't know the difference between a real stress and a conceptual stress you just thought of in your head. So any stress that you bring into your mind by chemistry is going to subvert your biology. The conclusion again is simple and brief. You are powerful. Your thoughts change your life. Your beliefs control your health. Take back your power. You are the powerful one. That way I won't have to see you down here at the store. And you could keep your vehicle running for a long time. Hey, I think I just lost my business. I better not tell the boss. Oh my God, if I tell them we got rid of customers, I don't know what they'll do.